everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a review and demonstration of the Mozart flush pens and these are really interesting pens. They are water soluble and by, by using a paintbrush or a water brush you can get some really cool looking watercolour effects. You can use water to blend the colours together to create gradients and they're just a, they're a really nice alternative to traditional watercolours. So I just want to quickly say a big thank you to the company Mozart Supplies for sending me these pens to review. I really really enjoyed using them and even though they were sent to me um, all the opinions and thoughts that I give in this video are honest and my own. So I was sent two different packs so I have the single brush pens which are the white ones and the dual brush pens which are the black ones and the biggest difference between the two pens as far as I understand it are just the different tips on them. So as far as I understand it and from what I've seen from using the pens the ink seems to be the same in both packs. So the white pens are the single brush pens and they have a real brush tip. So the tip on it has individual brush hairs just like a paintbrush or a water brush does and I thought that was really interesting and you can get some really cool effects with that and in terms of the different colours the pack of 20 has a really nice variety of colours the, they, none of the pens have colour numbers or colour names though and I will talk about it, a little bit more about that later on um, but the text on the pens just is just the company branding and their social media links. So the black pens are the dual ended, the double ended pens and they have a brush, a fibre brush tip on one end so that it's kind of similar to a Winsor & Newton brush marker or a Copic brush tip and the other end has a very fine tip just like a fine liner. So I thought that this was a really good combination of ends, a brush end and a fine liner and I think this would be really useful if you were using these pens for handwriting or for, for calligraphy. You can use the brush end for calligraphy and then use the fine tip end for handwriting or for outlining and the, the just you can do a, there's a lot of variety that you can do with these pens and obviously if you're using the pens for doing perhaps uh, very detailed colouring then the fine end comes in handy then as well. The pens are available in, in sets, they're not available individually as far as I know. The white pens, the single brush pens, come in a pack of 12 and a pack of 20 and then the double ended pens come in a pack of 24 and a pack of 12 and they are all available off Amazon. Um, Amazon.com.es.co.uk. Um, they're available on quite a few different Amazons, and I'll leave all the links to the pens in the description box below and to the company's website. And the company produces quite a lot of different art supplies, so I highly recommend you go check them out if you haven't heard of them. So, the very first thing I did when I got these pens were to swatch out all the colours, and I was quite surprised by the vibrancy of these colours. Now these are quite inexpensive pens and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the costs later on um, but because they are fairly inexpensive I was trying to be quite realistic in my expectations of how well the pen, how well the pigments would be of the pens and you know just trying to be fair and realistic but I was really very surprised by how pigmented and how vibrant the, the colours were and I absolutely love vibrant colours and a really nice variety even a pack, even the pack of twelve had uh, had a nice yellow, a nice orange, a really nice red, a pink, a couple of purples, blues, greens, a black, a brown. I think the colours are really lovely, vibrant. They are more opaque than a normal watercolour. So next, I thought I'd play around with the pens and uh, see how they reacted on the paper and see how they reacted with water because one of the one of the main reasons that I wanted to use these pens was to kind of use them instead of using watercolours. Um, I have I find watercolours quite difficult to uh, use sometimes and sometimes I just don't have the time to mix the colours and to do all that mixing and preparation with watercolours and I am very very comfortable using markers so the idea of having like a watercolour marker for me was just perfect because then I could, I love the effect of watercolour, I love how the colouring looks and the textured look of it all but 
I don't like mixing the colours and using the pans. I find that I tend to overload my brush with pigment. I just get in a big mess with watercolours normally. But I found using these as a really good alternative. So I did some tests with these and I found that the pigments reacted really well with water. Even some of the marks that I did were several days old. I've been testing these over a, a couple of weeks now, these pens. And even on marks that are like a week old, where the ink is very, it's thoroughly dry, it, I could react it again with water and spread it around, blend it out, and create some really interesting effects. And I, I felt that was, I found that was really good. So the pens reacted really well with water. I also found that I could mix my own colours. So here I have an acrylic block, and this is uh, one that I use for stamping, but you could use a bit of packaging or anything else. And I found that if I scribbled two of the pens down, I could mix them together with a paintbrush and create a whole new colour. So that was quite fun. Now I know I said just now that the main reason I was interested in these was so I didn't have to mix. And I didn't do any mixing for the demonstration piece, but I just thought I'd say that it is an option if you want to uh, use the pens that way or mix some colours. That is quite fun. I am now moving on to doing the demonstration piece and this is the flamenco girl illustration and uh, this illustration is actually part of a colouring book I recently did and there's an Etsy link to the colouring book in the description box below if you're interested. Um, I printed out the illustration onto watercolour paper and I'm using a very textured watercolour paper and it's 300 gram uh, with some waterproof ink and I taped it down to a board. So the ink in the pens, as I said before, very vibrant, highly pigmented, and the pens are very juicy as well. They're very full of ink, and it's very easy to get a good ink flow. With the single brush pens, which are the white ones, you do have to go quite slowly. If you're colouring on watercolour paper, which I would recommend if you're going to be using these pens, in order to get proper blending and proper um, sort of ink flow with the pens, it's, you, it's very... Um, it's much better on watercolor paper, but anyway, I found that when I was using the white pens, you have to go quite. You have to uh, color slowly, in order to get a a um, strong layer of color down. Because I think the textured paper interferes with the flow of the brush, so you just have to go slowly with the single brush pens in order to get a good flow of color. I did do a test on some uh, very smooth cardstock, and I found that it went on very um, quick. Uh, the the colours went on um, very strong on that, so it really is the texture of the paper, and that's just something to bear in mind to go slow with the brush um, with the white with the white pens on textured paper. So the way that I approach the colouring for this is to I took the pen and I laid down a layer of colour where I knew the shadows would be. So I basically worked from the shadows outwards, and I would take my brush my brush pen my sorry I took my water brush or a paintbrush and water and I just drew the colour up out of the shadows and into the highlighted areas to create like a gradient and I found that that worked really well and it was so easy and enjoyable to get shadows and gradients. If I was using pencils or even other types of markers I would have to lay down several different colours, do some blending but using these pens, it's a really, it's a very quick way, an easy way of getting gradients and shadows. And I've also found that I could layer, if I place two colours next to each other, so like in the leaves of the roses, I laid down a green and then I laid down a yellow. And I could kind of just blend the two together to create this rather nice yellowy green looking leaf, but still have the dark shadows down the centre. And I also noticed when I was looking on the Mozart Supply website that the they have refills available for the white pens. So for the single brush pens, you can buy refills for. You can buy them in a pack of 20. And I think this is really good. I, I always really appreciate it when art supply companies supply refills for their products. Um, because that way you don't have to keep chucking away pens. It's you If you really, really love a product and you can just refill it, it's so much more economical in the long term. So that's really nice. And the refills are available on Amazon as well. Um, in terms of cost, the... As I said, they're available on lots of different Amazons, but the single brush pens, so the white ones, in a pack of 20, a pack of 20 would cost you about $22. And I I checked just before I filmed this video for these prices. They Amazon, the prices fluctuate a little bit, but this is more or less what you can expect. Um, and then the set of 12 
dual brush pens co uh, would cost you about $14. And so that's about £14 pounds for the for the black pens and they're listed for about £25 for the white ones and then that's €24 Euros and €16 Euros, um, respectively. A couple of other things to mention here is that I somebody was talking to me about it and they were saying they were having trouble um, moving the ink on the paper and this is where the paper comes into play here they were using a sketchbook page and they were trying to use a, a, a paper that wasn't meant for water and they were trying to use kind of water to blend the colours together and it wasn't working. So in order to get the best effects with these pens, you really do need to use a watercolour or a mixed media paper. A paper that is designed for water. Because even, even if you're just going to be using a brush pen and you're not, even if you're not sort of saturating the paper with water, in order to get the best blending effects, you do need to use a paper that's meant for water. So that's something to bear in mind. If you're, if you're kind of wondering which pack you should get, I think in terms of the ink, now I, I don't, I, I haven't seen this written anywhere, but from what, from the colour swatches I made, from using the pens, I think that the ink inside is pretty much the same. So if you were thinking of getting a pack of these, I think it just depends on whether you'd like a real brush tip or whether you'd like to do the dual-ended ones. So um, in terms of ink, they're the same, but it just depends on what you would find most useful for the way that you colour all your artwork. Um, in I don't think I have a favourite, to be honest, and they both worked really well together. So I found that I could get different effects. Obviously, with the brush pens, you could get more painterly effects. With the other ones, the effects, you you know, they're a little bit more like using a, a regular marker. It really just depends on how you like to work. One thing I found with the pens, it wasn't an issue with the ink or anything, but one thing I would have liked was I would have really appreciated colour names or numbers on the pens. Because I found that if I had used a particular green in one place and I wanted to use it again, I was having trouble finding the colour again in the pile of pens um, because I'm very used to with Copics or with um, Pro Markers or other markers or pencils, you know, you, you know which colour you're using, you know the name or the number of it, so it's very easy to find that colour again if you need to use it. But as these pens didn't have numbers or anything on them, I was getting into a bit of a muddle at one point trying to remember or trying to match the colour, the pen, to whatever colour I was using. So I think um, as I'm using these pens a lot at the moment, I might go ahead and uh, make some little stickers or sort of make a little numbering system of my own to be able to keep track of which pen I'm using. It obviously doesn't detract at all from the quality of the ink, but it would be something that I, uh, I, I would appreciate um, on the pens. Because of the way I was colouring from going into the sha from the shadows into the highlights, I found it was really easy to create gradients and shadows. And for instance, like on the castanets there, that blend would have taken me perhaps four different markers and a good ten, you know, ten, ten minutes perhaps to be able to create that blend. And I found that it was just so easy and simple to do it with these. And I think that even though I still love my alcohol markers and these are not a replacement for them um, I did really enjoy using them and I really liked the watercolour effect so this is this kind of brings me back to the main reason why I was very interested in these pens in the first place and that was as a not as a replacement for my watercolours but to you because I don't use watercolours that often and one of the main reasons I don't use watercolours very often is that I don't like the unpredictability of the um, the paints, but I also don't, I'm not a big fan of mixing the colours. I find that takes a long time and I can't, I find it very difficult to replicate colours again. So um, if I've mixed a colour I really, really like, like a skin colour or I've got a great shade of yellow or green or red or whatever, I find that uh, being able to replicate that colour again is almost impossible. So I, this is one of the reasons why I've just never used watercolours a lot, but I do like the effect that they, the, how they look, and I do like the effects that you can get with watercolours. So, but I found that using these pens is a, for me, is a great alternative to my watercolours because I have much more control with the colour lay down. I can get the blended look of watercolours and I can get that lovely watercolour effect 
but the colours are really vibrant like an ink or like a marker and I don't have to mix any colours because the colours are all pre-mixed in the pen. So in conclusion, these pen, I think these pens are very good value for money. The inks are very vibrant. As I said, they are a bit more opaque than a watercolour ink is. Um, definitely not as transparent, but you do get lovely, vibrant effects with them. And I absolutely love the look of them. So um, thank you again, Mozart Supplies, for sending me these pens to review. And make sure if you guys have any questions or comments, you leave them down below in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. And all the links to the pens are in the description box. So if you want to go check them out, you can find the links in there. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.